I am going to go into more detail about what I'm doing here. This is going to be solar storage uh, from solar panels that I'm going to put on my garage. Uh, I was able to buy this uh, 2013 Chevy Volt battery pack for $1,100 locally here. Picked it up and brought it home. Uh, there are much, much better videos out there disassembling the pack. I'm going to link to one that's really excellent. It's really two hours well spent. That video will show you how to how to disassemble this pack. So I've taken the cover off of it. Underneath it looks like this. Very briefly again, because the other videos are much better at this. I really, I don't know almost anything at all about batteries or anything. I'm not an engineer. I, I'm learning everything I know from YouTube. So take this for what it's worth. Um, but very briefly, the Chevy Volt battery is total 360 volts. It's generally broken up into 48 volt sections. For instance, this is two 48 volt sections. You can see there's one, and this is a two kilowatt hour chunk there, 48 volts. Another two kilowatt chunk, and then that totals four kilowatts. And then same here is two, two, and then there's two of these 24 volt sections, which are one kilowatt, and that's a total of five. And then on the end, again, you have two, 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 and another 24 volt, one kilowatt hour chunk. Under the cover, you'll find that these batteries are covered with um, some electronics, which is the batter, battery management system. There's a, a box and then plugs that go from the box into each chunk and then a connector which connects them all together along here back to a central box here. I am not aware that anyone's been able to crack the code for the original battery management computer and use that. So for right now, what I want to do is to at least monitor each of the cells to be able to tell whether they're getting out of balance. I'm starting to think there might be a better way, but um, my initial thought is with one of these, it's called a Hobby King Battery Medic. It'll list up to six cell voltages, total pack voltage, and it's got, you know, provision to use there's a seven pin, six, five, four, and three on the side. I just ordered off of eBay uh, just a bunch of these um, seven pin, I think they, they're JST connectors. This is what the connector is. And my thought was that um, this is good for six cells. So there's seven wires and then I think it's a ground. And it's, uh, and each of these chunks has has 12 cells, individual cells. There's more batteries than that, but there's 12 cells in each of these. So these things are cheap. They're like, I don't know, they're less than 10 bucks. So two of these Hobby Kings could cover each one of these cells. And you could actually just have two of them and move them you know, plug and unplug them if you just wanted to sort of monitor how you're doing in terms of balance. Um, I wasn't necessarily going to use this to balance the cells other than I was just going to use it to monitor it. So I guess there's a couple of ways you could hook this up to the cells and I'll show you in a second when I take this cover off. You could connect these wires directly to the terminals on the top of the cells but a much more elegant solution would be to use the plugs here that go into the, these eventually all connect up and they have the voltage going through them. But in order to do that, you got to know what all these pins do. So that's what this video is about. All right, so I've, I've, this sits up on top and plugged in. I've removed that already. I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, a word about safety. Um, sort of a range people that don't seem to give a rip at all and people that maybe care too much about safety. I'm trying to take a middle ground here. I did look and just because these are DC batteries 
doesn't mean they can't kill you. This whole pack is 360 volts. Of course, when you when you remove the contactor, it, it disconnects most of it. But each of these chunks again is is 48 and 96, and they're connected together. And 96 volts of DC is enough to kill you, I suppose, under the right circumstances. But um, I don't really want to get electrocuted, so I did pick up a set of um, high voltage gloves, and you should do your own research on that. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'm much more comfortable using these. So this cover then will come off, and that exposes the top of these um, batteries. Each of these ears here represent one cell and each one of these cells on this 2013 battery I believe is made up of three individual batteries connected in parallel and then those are all connected in series in this chunk and I've taken off the little bus bars that go between here and here um, and then there are the, the, the cables on the end and that connects these all in series to work to, to make up to um, 360 volts so you can see this chunk right here is, is 46.8 volts this chunk right here 46.8 volts and then each of these cells Um, 3.89 volts. So this goes, this is one cell here. This is positive, negative, and then this will be positive and negative for that cell. And likewise down the line. And all of them are, are really quite imbalanced right now, and I suppose that has to do with the factory. Um, battery management system. I don't know how it's going to do without that over time. So this is the connector that goes to that battery. It, it plugs into these connectors here. Um, there's a cover on this that I took off just so I can see the colors of the wires. That end goes in there and the other end goes into the into the box here. I made up this diagram. It's it's you know, it's pretty janky and if you're a graphic artist or even know how to use Microsoft Paint, maybe you want to make a better one. I'll put a PDF uh, link here so you can actually see this document because this shows, okay, so what this is, this block here is the part that goes into the batteries and there are numbers on here that are too small for the camera to pick up, really. There's a one here, a nine here, and a 10 here, and an 18 here. So I've labeled those one, you know, through 18 here. And what I've done is for each number, I put the color wire. So BK black, yellow and purple, violet and yellow, green, blue, BL. Um, this is another blue, um, brown, uh, brown and white. These X's represent nothing. I think you get the idea. There's nothing there. Um, they're a little hard to tell, and so I did my best. Some of the color differences are subtle. Um, this goes into this connector here. So this is the part at the BMS, and that would be that way looking at it and again there's numbers on them too small to read right here in the corners and it's one through eight one two three four five six seven eight and then nine through twenty one on the top only the first two down here actually have wires coming out of them you can see there's there's two there and then the rest go across the top and so again, the colors go there, and then, but I think more importantly is this little chart 
here which shows that number two goes into 21. So this black goes to that black. And then where these wire colors were the same, six and seven, I did trace that with a um, continuity meter to make sure that six is going into 13. Again, you'll have to get the link to the PDF or maybe pause this and write it down, but this is where every, all the wires go. So two goes to 21, three to 19, uh, four to 17, five to 15, six to 13, seven to 11, eight to nine, nine, nine to one, 11 to 20, 12 to, okay, and so forth. Um, and you can see that. And that will just give you a sense of when the wires come out of the battery from this plug, I think you're gonna have to cut off maybe this one, um, where, what each of these wires do. And I'll show you what that, what, here's, here's what each of those wires do. Um, and let me go back to the battery and I'll show you. I, you wanna take your watch and rings off and stuff. Um, Okay, so what I found is that these two on the end, and if you look at my diagram in a second, here, let me go to the ohm reading, they're going to give you an ohm reading, and at the moment here, this is, let's see, I'm trying not to, these pins will bend really easy, so don't be careful with that. So 18.19. Um, those two on the end are the temperature probe. Okay, so I've got my little sheet here. And for the first cell, which is this one right here, it's pin eight and pin 17. And those are the, the first, that's eight, and 17 so they're right above each other and they're the 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 second pin from the right and the positive one is going to be on top and the negative one is going to be number 17 so these two pins if you touch that is 3.89 and then leaving then the next one, so the next cell would be these ears right here. It's going to be number seven, which is this one right here. And then it'll share number 17. It'll be the positive lead. So that one. And then it just sort of alternates after that. And it goes, so let me go back to the diagram. So if I go back to the diagram again, this is cell one. Cell two, that's how I numbered it. I don't know if they really are. Cell three, four, five, six, seven, and there's 12 of them in there. So pins number eight and 17 are gonna give you the voltage of this cell. And then seven and 17 will give you the voltage of the next one. And seven and 16 will give you the voltage of this one. And six and 16 will give you the voltage of this one. And, and so forth on down the line. Okay, so that brings me back to, to this connector and a problem I'm stuck on at the moment is, is, is there any way to wire that into my, my battery medic box here? Now, obviously this will plug in here and again, I know almost nothing about this, but I'm thinking this is for a six cell battery. But I think you have to have a common ground, and then you have the positive leads off of each of the six. Um, the way these pins work, there isn't a common ground. Um, there are several of them. And I guess I'm, I'm stumped at the moment as to how I can connect this box through, through this this wiring harness, if I you know cut off one end and, and connect these or connect these into here, I'm not sure how to do that. So um, I'm going to keep thinking about. It. Obviously, uh, it would be better, I think, if I don't know anything about Arduinos, but um, if you could build a little uh, computer that 
would take these inputs from these pins and then maybe cycle through them, get the voltage from each one, display the voltage on on a screen, you know, whatever, a computer screen, um, and just keep refreshing and going through, uh, you know, all of these packs. Again, it's it would be 12, 24, what are there, five sets of that, so 60 plus the ones on the ends have one, two, three, four, five, six, so 72 different um, cells is what we need. Um, so any suggestions you have on that would be great. I think that's it for right now.